Welcome to the City Wealth Live sessions. Today I interview Naomi Reeve and she is Group Director at Hivern, who are trustees in the Channel Islands, specifically in Jersey. Um, she was an IFC Gold Trustee of the Year winner for with us with the Channel Islands and Isle of Man. So I'd like to say welcome Naomi. Hi Karen, lovely to be talking to you. And you. Perhaps you'd give us a download on your yourself, your own career and also the organisation. Yeah, of course. So um, my name's Naomi, as you said, and I'm a Jersey girl, born and bred here on, on the island. Um, I qualified as a lawyer and uh, worked at Ogier initially uh, and then moved to the law firm Appleby, where I became a partner. And I've always practiced in the area of trusts, initially litigation, then um, more structuring around trusts. And finally, in 2014, I decided to leave private practice and move into the trust industry. So I went to work for Coots Trust Company in Jersey. And uh, after a couple of years, we were offered the opportunity to do a management buyout of Coots. And that's when we established the brand Highburn. But we brought with us all of the Coots staff and the Coots clients. Um, and we've taken that business now on a journey of going into the independent world of trusteeship. And I've uh, brought on some great new clients and some great new staff as well. Wow, that sounds amazing. So congratulations on all of that. So, um, right, to the questions. What's currently on your desk? Well, I think it's fair to say that 2022 has got off to a very busy start, which is great, of course, because I think post-COVID, we weren't sure what the world would look like. So it's great to see people still structuring. Uh, we're approaching the 5th of April, so we've got a lot of planning going on at the moment for people moving into the UK before the new tax year. And it's good, again, to see people still wanting to be in the UK. We've got private equity executives coming in. We've got people taking advantage of the investor visa. So that's all great. Um, on the less sort of um, optimistic side, we've obviously got all the news that's going on in Russia and Ukraine at the moment. So that's causing a lot of businesses to scrutinize their clients, to provide information to the regulator. So we're having to sort of juggle all of that at the moment. And then um, in terms of Highburn specifically, you mentioned that uh, Jersey is our main office, but we now have a, a new startup in London and a startup in Ireland as well. So we're very busy um, helping the teams to grow in those markets. And we're also waiting for um, regulatory approval to complete a transaction that will see us have an office in Guernsey in Switzerland. So that's an acquisition of an existing business. And that's going to be really exciting to be able to work with those markets more moving forwards. Wow, that's a big expansion plan. So excellent. That's really cool, isn't it? Perfect. So um, tell us about a challenging client matter that you may have had. Yeah, this is, um, this is really interesting because we obviously um, we deal a lot with clients who live in many different jurisdictions or have assets in different jurisdictions. So in terms of complexity, they're probably the most difficult cases, making sure that you've got really good tax and structuring advice in all of the different jurisdictions and that you stay on top of that. But I think for me, the most challenging cases are those um, where there's issues within the family, so either family disputes or... Um, um, issues relating to the transfer or succession of wealth. And I'm just thinking like over the last couple of years with lockdown, we've had a couple of families where there have been mental health issues, um, perhaps uh, an elderly patriarch or matriarch losing mental capacity. And they're always really challenging cases to work on. Uh, in certain cases, you've got family businesses and very often, especially in jurisdictions such as Asia, the patriarch stays very close to those businesses and then when they're unable to operate in them anymore it's um it's really um in rewarding and challenging to be working with the families to look at transferring that business to the next generation and we certainly had a couple of those during lockdown um one case in particular where again the patriarch lost mental capacity and he had nobody really that wanted to step in and run the business so as trustee, as the legal owner of those assets, we really had to step up and, and work with the management team to make sure that they fully understood the ownership structure and were, were able to keep his vision going. In another case, again, the patriarch lost capacity and the children decided that they wanted to go their separate ways. So it was very much a case of looking to split the family assets and allow them to, to pursue their own interests. And again, that's sad in some ways to see you know, one generation's wealth be, be divided but equally you have to be pragmatic sometimes 
about what's best for a family moving forwards. And I think indeed the law supports that, doesn't it? A split of assets if people don't agree. So yes, it's a, a definite route people can take. Um, so tell us about a valuable lesson you've learned throughout your career. Yeah, I think um, for me, it's always a case of um, being very authentic in everything you do and not overselling yourself. As a trustee, we're in um, the business of building long-term relationships. And when you go into a room and you first meet a family, perhaps you're pitching for a new piece of business, you've got to be so careful and um, to let them see the real you and to let them see your skill set so that they can genuinely decide whether they're going to be able to establish a relationship and work with you. Um, I've been in pitches where people have you know, presented themselves in a way that, that they say what they think the client wants to hear. But that always you know, comes back to bite you to a certain extent because you've then got to deliver on that. And, and genuinely, over the course of a relationship, you can't keep something up if, it, if it's not actually you. So um, I'm very much you know, a fan of sticking to your knitting in terms of what can I bring to this relationship? What's my skill set? And then finding people, whether it's a lawyer, an accountant, tax advisor, to help you in areas that aren't your skill set. Uh, so, yeah, I think that, that's my key thing. Don't oversell yourself. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. So um, a defining career moment. I've touched upon it at the beginning, actually. I think it's for me very much having left private practice legal and moved into the trust industry. And I think a lot of people thought I was taking a big gamble when I did that. I think um, lawyers can be quite precious, if we're honest, and, and yeah. think their industry is the most important industry. So I think a lot of people thought I was mad giving up partnership and going into a trust company. But actually, I was really ready for that move. Um, I needed to learn more. I love learning. And I feel that since I've moved into industry, my, my role has really expanded. Not only do I obviously provide trustee services, but I've learned about how businesses operate. I'm much more involved with administration as well as trustee decision making. And I work with a much wider range of people from a whole mix of different backgrounds. And I, I really enjoy that. So I think that was probably the, the biggest moment for me. Until, of course, I won Trustee of the Year at City Wealth Awards, which is uh, a definitely a <laughs> And it is a hard, a hard one, that, that one to win. Actually, the legal categories and trust categories is an awful lot of entries. So well done. Uh, it's lovely recognition because it is, um, you know, it is a big move um, and it takes you a long time to become established as a trustee as well. So I'm very grateful for it. Thank you. Good. Um, well, we're glad you won it. Um, and so how do you keep ahead with new technology? I mean, that's had a bit of a surge over COVID, hasn't it? I mean, I imagine you've got good systems and processes, but did anything new come in that uh, helped you look at that area? I suspect, like most people, I hadn't even heard of Zoom until March 2020. And then uh, very quickly, of course, we all got used to uh, forums such as this. And, and I think they've been transformational in terms of how we do business. We're very committed here at Highburn to ESG as well. And I think moving forwards, we'll very much rely upon this sort of technology to cut down our carbon footprint. It's still, of course, very important to have face to face meetings. And again, in 2022, we've started now being able to travel a bit more freely, meeting with clients, actually attending in-person roundtable events. And of course, they're so important for learning about developments in, in technology and other developments in the sector. So I think striking that right balance between technology and face-to-face uh, -face is really important. But technology generally is hugely important in the trust sector. And we rely extensively upon um, data tools and document management tools now to be able to coordinate and maintain all of the reporting that we have to do, whether it's tax reporting or regulatory reporting. Um, and I don't think we can get enough of it. So, so um, I, I can't wait to see what further developments come. And I think although we'll never be an automated uh, sector, because it very much is about personal relationships and um, personal decision making, we definitely need really good technology to support us. I think there's probably a bit of a gap there, to be honest, um, both in terms of actually applications, but also uh, resource around uh, service providers who provide that support to us. Interesting. So what's keeping you up at night? <laughs> Not very much, to be honest. 
I'm a really good sleeper and I can drop off anywhere. I was, text, I was talking these questions through with a colleague earlier and uh, yeah, I, I like a good night's sleep. But um, I, I, I mean, I touched upon resourcing in the last question. And I think that's probably one of the biggest areas of concern. Business is, is booming. I think it is for a lot of businesses in the private wealth sector. And that's really great. But we do need to make sure that we've got really good talent coming through to, to help to run those relationships moving forwards. And I think a lot of people have moved out of private wealth, unfortunately. Perhaps it was seen as higher risk or um, not as sexy as funds and corporate. Uh, I actually think it's the, the best sector to be involved in, but, but I would say that. But, you know, you learn so much and you get involved with so many different things. And I think we really need to nurture our talent coming into the sector. And again, I know you host lots of next generation events and I think they are really important for, for getting that network of next generations coming through. So, yeah, I think for me, it would be nice to know that there's a really good, strong um, track of people coming out of school, out of university, who understand and see the positives in what we do. And I'm sure we've got some work to do ourselves on, on rebranding uh, what we do within private wealth. And, uh, you know, not um, not letting all the adverse media that comes out around the wealthy uh, dictate what sectors people move into. Mm, yeah, interesting point. So moving on to slightly more fun, uh, the fun stuff. Um, what about restaurants? What's your favourite one for a client meeting? Well, yeah, that's one of the nicest things about um, post-COVID, isn't it? Getting back into being able to go out for a nice lunch with a client or with an intermediary. I'm going to focus on Jersey here because we've got some fantastic restaurants and it's brilliant when clients do come over to the island and you can take them down to somewhere like the Oyster Box in St. Brellard's Bay. What yeah. a better place to sit and have lunch and showcase your island. Uh, you've got beautiful beach and sea views, lovely fresh seafood. So I think that's great. And we get fantastic feedback if we're able to take uh, clients down there. Got to avoid the foggy days, of course, but no, we're very, very lucky. Uh, you went off a little bit there, but I know what you were saying, which is the foggy days, which people who do not go to the Channel Islands uh, probably don't know, do they? But there's a few days a year, isn't there, where the fog comes down and then that's it really, isn't it? But it's not very often. Uh, yeah, so, so the oyster box, all I would say is don't go there if it's foggy because it's nowhere near such a nice experience. And as you know, we do suffer with our fog in Jersey. You do occasionally, yes. Okay, a favourite hobby or pastime? Well, I think I'm getting quite old, to be honest, because when I was thinking about this question, I think my favourite hobby at the moment is actually having a quiet Saturday night in with my family. Um, you know, cooking a nice meal, watching some good movies, um, and just having some family time. I think, again, that's a bit of a sign of the fact that we are travelling again now. So I've, I've been out to London, I've been to Dubai recently, Switzerland. So you really do just value some, some good quality time at, at home, to be honest. OK, good answer. And so in the office, coffee, tea or something else? Oh, <laughs> it's a Monday morning. I'm not allowed to talk about <laughs> something else. I don't think. Not quite yet, but no, definitely a cup of tea. I can't get the day going without a cup of tea. And in fact, um, yeah, well, some of my colleagues are permanently having to make cups of tea for me because I'm always on the phone and you never get a chance to go and grab a cup. But... I operate much better with a cup of tea in my hand. Good to hear. So uh, moving on now, we're coming on to your word association games. So I'm going to start with travel. Lo love travelling, um, especially with the family, although I love travelling on business as well. So um, this year we've managed to squeeze in a lovely holiday in, in Whistler, skiing, and uh, we're heading off to Mexico at Easter. So yeah, we do love our travel. Um, again, very conscious of our carbon footprint, but um, there's just so many beautiful places out there and you've got to get out and see the world. Yeah, indeed. And the next one, family. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of three girls um, and we all live back in Jersey now. I actually live next door to my parents as well. So you can imagine there's lots of family always around and it's great to have them all here. Very lucky during COVID that everyone was here and we were able to stay regularly in contact. So yeah, fam family is very important. Now we had we had a debate about this next word, but uh, I'm going to let you have it. So, uh, hi Vern, go ahead. <laughs> You're very kind, Karen. And as we were chatting about before we came online, I think as 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 business owners, 
your business becomes a part of your family, doesn't it? And your colleagues become your friends. So yeah, very much live and breathe Hyvern. Um, you know, all the merchandise you have, um, that it's always around your house, isn't it? And you're always thinking about what's the next step for the business. So you really do live and breathe it. And uh, I, I didn't mean it in a way of wanting to sell or promote the business. I just find my own identity has blended into Highburn's identity now. Yeah, I, I understand completely. So, yeah, therefore, that's why I allowed it. So that's amazing. Thank you so much indeed. I just want to say to viewers, today we were talking to Naomi Reeve and she is Group Director at Highvern in the Channel Islands. And she was our IFC Gold Trustee of the Year winner this year. So thank you so much, Naomi. Thank you very much, Karen, and hope to see you in person soon. Yeah, indeed, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, please press the thumbs up and subscribe and we'll let you know about other videos that are coming up. If you would like to find Naomi, you can find her on our leaders list, which is www.leaderslist.co.uk.